about another story that's got nothing to do with that now, thank goodness. A New Zealander who has invented something that's literally changing the world. His surprising invention is on trial around New Zealand, but it is the United States where it's really taking off. Have you ever wondered where these things lead? There's an assumption that all the drains go to a sewage treatment plant, but the drains on the road or outside typically go straight to a stream, a creek, or the, straight to the ocean. Way back when, Mike Hanna worked for Auckland Council as a civil engineer. We realised there was a big problem with our harbours and our lakes and our rivers, and they needed to do something about it. This is the big problem Mike's talking about, all the stuff coming off our roads. He didn't see anyone coming up with a solution, so he did. Well, well there's a hole. <laughs> Why don't we put something in there? Litter trap was born. Well, a version of it. We thought initially it would be easy, just put these in every drain and it would be done. But then we realised that it's a lot harder to get people motivated to actually make a change. 25 years later, um, we're still going and the world's catching up. <laughs> It's pretty much a basket and a drain, but it's a very well engineered basket. First thing is that people say, well, a basket and a drain, well, that's just going to fill up and cause flooding. I am a hydraulic engineer, so I do understand how water flows. Yeah, he's got a point. But there is that issue of scale. There's a lot of drains in New Zealand. I estimate there'd probably be over a million drains. Each one of those drains is contributing to one heck of a global mess. New research shows that a truckload of plastic has been dumped into our oceans every 38 seconds over the past decade. The result? Microplastics and their toxins turning up in our bottled and tap water, seafood and table salt, and even the air we breathe. There's a lot of research going on to on just what it will mean long term. It's a bit like, you know, these things that give you cancer. We didn't really know what they were doing to you until you start falling over. <laughs> And that's where Phil comes in. Eat Less Plastic really came about from some friends of mine. They educated me on how bad the single-use plastic problem was globally. When Phil's not acting as Tom Cruise's stunt double, he's taking action, waking people up to plastic pollution. He's just sailed from the States to New Zealand through the Pacific, where little data exists, trawling the ocean and combing the islands. What I did see was atolls and little islands just full and littered with plastic. Underneath all the rocks was microplastics and there's millions and millions of them. It's those same plastics that are coming off our shores. I did do some testing on the way in here and uh, we found just as much plastic here in the ocean than anywhere else in the world. Why not stop it at the source before it goes actually into the water? Pull that out. Easy as. That's exactly what the local board on Waiheke thought. We really didn't think there would be much pollution on Waiheke because, you know, it's quite environmentally conscious people and not a lot of people over here. So there's 35 drains on Waiheke that we're right. doing a trial with. We got 4,000 pieces of litter in 60 days. So we reckon there's probably about 350,000, if not more, pieces of litter coming from Waiheke into out there. This is just the typical sort of stuff. Your Tetra Pak drink carton that your kids drink. Cigarette butts. It drives me nuts when people throw their cigarette butts out the window. Where do they think it goes? Stop doing that. Yeah, okay to kill yourself, but not kill our ocean. The filter is actually made out of a type of plastic. People don't realise that it breaks down quite quickly, but it doesn't really go away, it just gets small. At least once a month, we take groups of divers in the water purely to get trash out. Since the litter traps have been installed here on the island, we've actually seen a dramatic decrease in the kinds and types and volumes of waste we're actually getting out of the water and being caught here at the source, which is great. Mike feels he's got the front end of the problem sorted. The back end is another story. What's key really is getting a better understanding of where this plastics pollution is coming from so we can uh, make changes. A lot of it has their name on it too, you know, <laughs> so you can figure out who it is pretty quickly. Manufacturers out there, I'd start working on it now because there's guys like us that are out there going to put the hard word on Yeah, we're going to make you look <laughs> bad, so you better do something, eh? Cool. Love it. Nice work. Yeah. <laughs> if you go overseas, if you go to the Mediterranean or parts of the East Coast USA, the, the water's just full of plastic and, and debris and garbage. Um, New Zealand will become like that too if we don't do something now. Awesome, right?
one of those things in my brain right now.